The Old Street Lamp Did you ever hear the story of the old street lamp? It is not remarkably interesting, but for once in a way you may as well listen to it. It was a most respectable old lamp, which had seen many, many years of service, and now was to retire with a pension. It was this evening at its post, for the last time, giving light to the street. His feelings were something like those of an old dancer at the theatre, who is dancing for the last time, and knows that on the morrow she will be in her garret, alone and forgotten. The lamp had very great anxiety about the next day, for he knew that he had to appear for the first time at the town hall, to be inspected by the mayor and the council, who were to decide if he were fit for further service or not. Whether the lamp was good enough to be used to light the inhabitants of one of the suburbs, or in the country, at some factory, and if not, it would be sent at once to an iron foundry, to be melted down. In this latter case it might be turned into anything, and he wondered very much whether he would then be able to remember that he had once been a street lamp, and it troubled him exceedingly. Whatever might happen, one thing seemed certain, that he would be separated from the watchman and his wife, whose family he looked upon as his own. The lamp had first been hung up on that very evening that the watchman, then a robust young man, had entered upon the duties of his office. Ah, well, it was a very long time since one became a lamp and the other a watchman. His wife had a little pride in those days. She seldom condescended to glance at the lamp, excepting when she passed by in the evening, never in the daytime. But in later years, when all these, the watchman, the wife and the lamp, had grown old, she had attended to it, cleaned it and supplied it with oil. The old people were thoroughly honest. They had never cheated the lamp of a single drop of the oil provided for it. This was the lamp's last night in the street, and tomorrow he must go to the town hall. Two very dark things to think of. No wonder he did not burn brightly. Many other thoughts also passed through his mind. How many persons he had lighted on their way, and how much he had seen. As much, very likely, as the mayor and corporation themselves. None of these thoughts were uttered aloud, however, for he was a good honourable old lamp, who would not willingly do harm to anyone, especially to those in authority. As many things were recalled to his mind, the light would flash up with sudden brightness. He had, at such moments, a conviction that he would be remembered. There was a handsome young man once, thought he. It is certainly a long while ago, but I remember he had a little note, written on pink paper with a gold edge. The writing was elegant, evidently a lady's hand. Twice he read it through, and kissed it, and then looked up at me with eyes that said quite plainly, I am the happiest of men. Only he and I know what was written on this his first letter from his lady love. Ah, yes, and there was another pair of eyes that I remember. It is really wonderful how the thoughts jump from one thing to another. A funeral passed through the street. A young and beautiful woman lay on a bier, decked with garlands of flowers and attended by torches, which quite overpowered my light. All along the street stood the people from the houses, in crowds, ready to join the procession. But when the torches had passed from before me, and I could look around, I saw one person alone, standing against my post, and weeping. Never shall I forget the sorrowful eyes that looked up at me. These and similar reflections occupied the old street lamp, on this the last time that his light would shine. The sentry, when he is relieved from his post, knows at least who will succeed him, and may whisper a few words to him. But the lamp did not know his successor, or he could have given him a few hints respecting rain or mist, and could have informed him how far the moon's rays would rest on the pavement, and from which side the wind generally blew, and so on. On the bridge over the canal stood three persons, who wished to recommend themselves to the lamp, for they thought he could give the office to whomsoever he chose. The first was a herring's head, which could emit light in the darkness. He remarked that it would be a great saving of oil 
if they placed him on the lamp-post. Number two was a piece of rotten wood, which also shines in the dark. He considered himself descended from an old stem, once the pride of the forest. The third was a glow-worm, and how he found his way there the lamp could not imagine. Yet there he was, and could really give light as well as the others. But the rotten wood and the herring's head declared most solemnly, by all they held sacred, that the glow-worm only gave light at certain times, and must not be allowed to compete with themselves. The old lamp assured them that not one of them could give sufficient light to fill the position of a street lamp, but they would believe nothing he said, and when they discovered that he had not the power of naming his successor, they said they were very glad to hear it, for the lamp was too old and worn out to make a proper choice. At this moment the wind came rushing round the corner of the street, and through the air-holes of the old lamp. "'What is this, I hear?' said he. "'That you are going away to-morrow? Is this evening the last time we shall meet?' Then I must present you with a farewell gift. I will blow into your brain, so that in future you shall not only be able to remember all that you have seen or heard in the past, but your light within shall be so bright that you shall be able to understand all that is said or done in your presence. Oh, that is really a very, very great gift, said the old lamp. I thank you most heartily. I only hope I shall not be melted down. That is not likely to happen yet, said the wind, and I will also blow a memory into you, so that should you receive other similar presents, your old age will pass very pleasantly. That is, if I am not melted down, said the lamp. But should I, in that case, still retain my memory? Do be reasonable, old lamp, said the wind, puffing away. At this moment the moon burst forth from the clouds. "'What will you give the old lamp?' asked the wind. "'I can give nothing,' she replied. "'I am on the wane, and no lamps have ever given me light, "'while I have frequently shone upon them.' And with these words the moon hid herself again behind the clouds, that she might be saved from further importunities. Just then a drop fell upon the lamp from the roof of the house, but the drop explained that he was a gift from those grey clouds, and perhaps the best of all gifts. I shall penetrate you so thoroughly, he said, that you will have the power of becoming rusty, and if you wish it, to crumble into dust in one night. But this seemed to the lamp to be a very shabby present, and the wind thought so too. Does no one give any more? Will no one give any more? shouted the breath of the wind as loud as it could. Then a bright falling star came down, leaving a broad luminous streak behind it. "'What was that?' cried the herring's head. "'Did not a star fall? I really believe it went into the lamp. Certainly, when such high-born personages try for the office, we may as well say good-night and go home.' And so they did, all three, while the old lamp threw a wonderfully strong light all around him. "'This is a glorious gift,' said he. The bright stars have always been a joy to me, and have always shone more brilliantly than I ever could shine, though I have tried with my whole might, and now they have noticed me, a poor old lamp, and have sent me a gift that will enable me to see clearly everything that I remember, as if it still stood before me, and to be seen by all those who love me. And therein lies the truest pleasure." For joy, which we cannot share with others, is only half enjoyed. That sentiment does you honour, said the wind, but for this purpose wax lights will be necessary. If these are not lighted in you, your particular faculties will not benefit others in the least. The stars have not thought of this. They suppose that you and every other light must be a wax taper. But I must go down now. So he laid himself to rest. Wax tapers, indeed, said the lamp. I have never yet had these, nor is it likely I ever shall, if I could only be sure of not being melted down. The next day, well, perhaps we had better pass over the next day. The evening had come, and the lamp was resting in the grandfather's chair, and guess where? Why, at the old watchman's house. He had begged, as a favour, 
that the mayor and corporation would allow him to keep the street lamp in consideration of his long and faithful service as he had himself hung it up and lit it on the day he first commenced his duties four and twenty years ago he looked upon it almost as his own child he had no children so the lamp was given to him there it lay in the great armchair near to the warm stove it seemed almost as if it had grown larger for it appeared quite to fill the chair the old people sat at their supper casting friendly glances at the old lamp whom they would willingly have admitted to a place at the table it is quite true that they dwelt in a cellar two yards deep in the earth and they had to cross a stone passage to get to their room but within it was warm and comfortable and strips of list had been nailed around the door the bed and the little window had curtains and everything looked clean and neat on the window seat stood two curious flower pots which a sailor named christian had brought over from the east or west indies they were of clay and in the form of two elephants with open backs they were hollow and filled with earth and through the open space flowers bloomed in one grew some very fine chives or leeks this was the kitchen garden the other elephant which contained a beautiful geranium they called their flower garden on the wall hung a large colored print representing the congress of vienna and all the kings and emperors at once a clock with heavy weights hung on the wall and went tick tick steadily enough yet it was always rather too fast which however the old people said was better than being too slow they were now eating their supper while the old street lamp as we have heard lay in the grandfather's armchair near the stove it seemed to the lamp as if the whole world had turned round but after a while the old watchman looked at the lamp and spoke of what they had both gone through together in rain and in fog during the short bright nights of summer or in the long winter nights through the drifting snowstorms when he longed to be at home in the cellar then the lamp felt it was all right again he saw everything that had happened quite clearly as if it were passing before him surely the wind had given him an excellent gift the old people were very active and industrious they were never idle for even a single hour on sunday afternoons they would bring out some books generally a book of travels which they were very fond of the old man would read aloud about africa with its great forests and the wild elephants while his wife would listen attentively stealing a glance now and then at the clay elephants which served as flower pots i can almost imagine i'm seeing it all she said and then how the lamp wished for a wax taper to be lighted in him for then the old woman would have seen the smallest detail as clearly as he did himself the lofty trees with their thickly entwined branches the naked negroes on horseback and whole herds of elephants treading down bamboo thickets with their broad heavy feet what is the use of all my capabilities sighed the old lamp when i cannot obtain any wax lights they have only oil and tallow here and these will not do one day a great heap of wax candle ends found their way into the cellar the larger pieces were burnt and the smaller ones the old woman kept for waxing her thread so there were now candles enough but it never occurred to any one to put a little piece in the lamp here i am now with my rare powers thought the lamp i have faculties within me but i cannot share them they do not know that i could cover these white walls with beautiful tapestry or change them into noble forests or indeed to anything else they might wish for the lamp however was always kept clean and shining in a corner where it attracted all eyes strangers looked upon it as lumber but the old people did not care for that they loved the lamp one day it was the watchman's birthday the old woman approached the lamp smiling to herself and said i will have an illumination today in honor of my old man and the lamp rattled in his metal frame for he thought now at last i shall have a light within me but after all no wax light was placed in the lamp but oil as usual the lamp burned through the whole evening 
and began to perceive too clearly that the gift of the stars would remain a hidden treasure all his life. Then he had a dream, for to one with his faculties dreaming was no difficulty. It appeared to him that the old people were dead, and that he had been taken to the iron foundry to be melted down. It caused him quite as much anxiety as on the day when he had been called upon to appear before the mayor and the council at the town hall. But though he had been endowed with the power of falling into decay from rust when he pleased, he did not make use of it. He was therefore put into the melting furnace, and changed into as elegant an iron candlestick as you could wish to see, one intended to hold a wax taper. The candlestick was in the form of an angel holding a nosegay, in the centre of which the wax taper was to be placed. It was to stand on a green writing-table in a very pleasant room. Many books were scattered about, and splendid paintings hung on the walls. The owner of the room was a poet, and a man of intellect. Everything he thought or wrote was pictured around him. Nature showed herself to him sometimes in the dark forests, or at others in cheerful meadows where the storks were strutting about or on the deck of a ship sailing across the foaming sea with the clear blue sky above, or at night in the glittering stars. What powers I possess, said the lamp, awaking from his dream, I could almost wish to be melted down, but no, that must not be while the old people live. They love me for myself alone, they keep me bright and supply me with oil. I am as well off as the picture of the Congress, in which they take so much pleasure and from that time he felt at rest in himself, and not more so than such an honourable old lamp rarely deserved to be. End of The Old Street Lamp Recording by Noel Badrian, County Offaly, Ireland